The flight attendant hands you a tray. You peel back the foil. Take a bite. Bland. Under-seasoned. You blame the airline. But here's what's strange. Lufthansa noticed passengers drinking almost as much tomato juice as beer. On the ground, tomato juice ranks among the least popular beverages. At 35,000 feet, people can't stop ordering it. Something about flying changes what humans crave. The food isn't broken. You are. In 2010, Lufthansa's catering team faced a puzzle. Complaints about bland food were rising, yet their recipes hadn't changed. Same chefs, same ingredients, same kitchen. The only variable was altitude. They hired the Fraunhofer Institute to investigate. Researchers acquired a decommissioned Airbus fuselage, placed it in a low-pressure chamber, and recruited volunteers to eat meals under simulated flight conditions. What they discovered would change how airlines think about food forever. Taste perception didn't just decrease at altitude. It collapsed. Sweet and salty flavors dropped by roughly 30%. But one flavor family behaved completely differently. Umami, the savory taste found in tomatoes, mushrooms, and parmesan, remained stable or even intensified. The tomato juice mystery suddenly had an answer. The cabin environment attacks your senses from multiple directions at once. Humidity drops to 10 to 15 percent, drier than the Sahara Desert. Your comfortable living room maintains 40 to 60 percent. Within minutes of reaching cruising altitude, your nasal passages begin to dehydrate. This matters because up to 80 percent of what you perceive as flavor actually comes from your nose, not your tongue. Those mucous membranes carrying odor molecules to your brain stop working efficiently. Meanwhile, cabin pressure simulates 6,000 to 8,000 feet elevation. Your ears pop to equalize, but your taste receptors are quietly adjusting too. Reduced oxygen makes them significantly less sensitive. You're essentially eating with a mild cold while sitting on a mountain. Then there's the noise nobody thinks about. Jet engines produce a constant 85 decibels inside the cabin. That's heavy city traffic sustained for hours on end. Cornell University researchers tested whether sound alone could affect taste perception. They fed subjects identical foods in quiet rooms and under simulated airplane noise. Sweet perception dropped significantly in loud conditions. Salty remained somewhat stable, but umami did something entirely unexpected. It got stronger. Your brain, overwhelmed by auditory input, suppresses certain taste signals while amplifying others. The same neural pathways that make you crave comfort food when stressed kick into overdrive at altitude. Your body isn't malfunctioning. It's adapting to an environment humans never evolved to inhabit. So if sweet and salty fade while umami intensifies, why don't airlines just load everything with MSG and call it a day? Some actually do exactly that. United's executive chef adds umami-rich ingredients like spinach, tomatoes, and shellfish to every dish. Singapore Airlines tests meals in a simulated aircraft cabin before serving them to passengers. They've learned that curry, Ginger and lemongrass survive altitude while delicate herbs simply vanish. Cathay Pacific went further, developing a craft beer called Betsy, formulated specifically for cruising altitude. Increased carbonation and citrus notes compensate for dulled receptors. But even perfect recipe engineering faces one more obstacle. Airplane food is time-shifted. Meals are cooked in catering facilities, hours before departure. Blast chilled to near freezing, loaded onto carts, driven across tarmacs, and stored in galleys until serving time. When you eat, you're consuming food prepared 6 to 12 hours earlier, reheated in convection ovens with no open flames allowed. Fried foods lose their crispness. 
Grilled meats turn rubbery. Delicate sauces separate. Vegetables go limp. The logistics of feeding 300 passengers at 35,000 feet with equipment smaller than most home kitchens means certain textures become impossible. Crispy, caramelized, fresh, these words don't exist at altitude. What survives the journey is braised, stewed, and heavily sauced. Here's the part that surprises everyone. Airlines have known about these sensory changes for decades. The science is completely settled. Yet most carriers still serve food designed for ground-level taste buds. The economics explain everything. Reformulating menus costs money. Training catering staff costs money. Premium ingredients that survive altitude cost money. Budget carriers calculated that passengers will tolerate bad food if tickets are cheap enough. Legacy Airlines discovered that business class revenues justify better food engineering while economy gets whatever the same kitchen produces. The bland chicken on your tray isn't a mystery. It's a business decision made by someone who will never have to eat it themselves. Your taste system at altitude mimics having a mild cold. Congestion, dehydration, muted smell. Every single passenger on every flight experiences identical sensory suppression. But understanding the mechanism helps you eat better in the air. Spicy foods work because capsaicin receptors function normally at altitude. Umami-rich dishes satisfy because those pathways remain fully intact. Carbonated drinks feel more interesting because bubbles stimulate receptors that still respond. The wine list matters less than you think since your palate can't detect subtlety anyway. Your tongue hasn't failed you. It's operating in conditions humans spent zero evolutionary time preparing for. Next time you unwrap that foil tray, remember what's happening inside your body. Air drier than any desert on Earth. Pressure equivalent to a mountain summit. Constant noise suppressing sweetness while boosting savory. Your taste system is working exactly as designed, just not designed for a pressurized aluminum tube seven miles above the ground. The real question isn't why airplane food tastes bad. It's why anyone expected it to taste good in the first place. Have you ever noticed yourself craving different foods when you fly?